Mike Parker, Vincent Busty. This is my precinct. Any help you want? Detective Adam Flint. How do you do? Lieutenant? We lost them somewhere as they came in here off 161st Street. Mm -hmm. I've got men reporting from here, 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 and here. None of them have picked up a trace. We've got them penned in from the concourse to River Avenue and from 155th Street to 161st Street. You don't have an identification on them yet, do you? Not yet, but we shot one of them. The lab is checking his prints right now. If they belong to this area, I may be able to come up with something useful on how they think as soon as I know who they are. Fill them in. We got a phone call from a woman, Lieutenant. I heard the shooting during the robbery. Eight or nine minutes later, we picked them up in Manhattan, following them up here to the Bronx. Now, they had a second car stashed over here on Teller Avenue. They got into that and got rid of the first one. Up to that point, we figured this was all part of their blueprint. But after that, we were so close on them, I, all I could do was just about keep moving. We've kept the perimeter closing in on them. We haven't given them much freedom. So whatever they've done has got to be pretty random. Now, the last time you had them in sight was just after they turned onto the L, huh? I've got men checking door to door. We'll just wait and see what turns up. Somebody will see them. They'll turn up. This. Better give him a refill. So then we sat. Han, I've got no idea. Whenever the judge comes back and they get through the formalities, we might have to sit there all afternoon. How should I know what Los Angeles looks like? I told you. They picked us up in a car at the airport. We went straight to the court. And we were sitting. The court? It looks like a court in New York. Right this minute, I'm sitting. No, no, not in a court, in a drugstore. It looks like a drugstore in New York. I'm eating hamburgers for lunch. What are you getting sore about hamburgers for? She's sore because I come to Los Angeles and eat a hamburger in a drugstore. Honey, now that's not a snide remark. Look, I'm not Marco Polo exploring China. Get me off the hook, will you? What's so different about Los Angeles? Well, you can tell with the second cup of coffee's free. Is it? Yeah. Honey, it's not like a drugstore in New York. The second cup of coffee is free. All over town. All over the city. Yeah, it's a full cup. Huh? I miss you. How do you explain a thing like that? I know I only saw you this morning. But I feel very far away. It's like I was looking out the window of the plane and I saw the whole United States rolling on under me. <laughs> yeah. It's a big country, honey. I love you too, Evie. Take care of yourself, you hear? Give the kid a kiss. Just as soon as the judge turns him over to us, we'll take him straight to the airport. Of course I'm gonna bring home postcards. Yeah, yeah. Be good, huh? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was just 
was thinking. Why? How insane this is. What? Well, we come to a strange city, we buy postcards. Then we go home, handcuffed to two killers. <laughs> from this tower. in the obituaries this morning. Was it a nice service, Kowa? I gave him a decent burial. I came here to kill you. I told you a thousand times there's nothing written on my face. Why do you need to kill me? So you won't give me a decent burial the way you did for Knox? Close the door, Frank. Let's leave it open. I don't want anyone to call the elevator away before I'm ready to use it. Close the door, Frank. There are people living around here. Someone's going to have to come up 183 steps to close it. Now, close the door. No! What did I do to you and your brother that it makes it impossible for you to forgive me? What terrible thing did I do to you boys? How long were we in that orphanage, Koa? Fifteen years? Sixteen, in a couple of months. And you were there all the time? That's right, I was there. Taking care of us? Watching over us? Yes. Treating us like animals in an experiment? That's not true, Franklin. I gave you love and understanding. Cowell. How do you think you'd like it? For 16 years and a couple of months? Somebody always standing over you, watching you, knowing every mean, bad thing you ever did, and forgiving you for every one of them? Is that a crime? I saw you pull that cat's tail, Franklin. I saw you break that cellar window, Knox. Now, I know the nature of boys your age, but those are not nice things to do. Yeah, 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 Franklin and Knox! Did I ever punish you once? Did I ever touch you once? Did I ever touch you? Kindness rained from the heavens. I set you the best example I could. You bet you did. And how could we equal that? How could we measure up to that, Caldwell? You were perfect. And this morning, you had to go and top yourself. This morning, you had to be the perfect Christian martyr and give my brother a decent funeral instead of carting him off to Potter's Field. You know why I'm going to kill you, Cowell? 
because you never once gave me a chance to hate you. I can't even ask you to forgive me, can I? Now you just say it, and I'll blow your head off right now. You recognize that car? Does it belong to anybody living here? Nothing ever happens for us the easy way, does it? I wonder if there's a way of walking up. Well, there must be. Franklin? Oh. 